hey, so I saw Blue Beetle. Doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in this one. I had kind of forgotten that it even came out. But as I've said in the past, I'm a sucker for the superhero genre, and I'm somewhat familiar with this character from the Young Justice TV show, so I figured what the hell, I'll give it a shot. The trailers looked pretty generic, so I went in with rock bottom expectations. And I have to admit, I liked it more than I thought I would, although the low expectations might have helped. It gets better as it goes on, let me put it that way. So normally when I talk about a superhero or similar branded property, I like to talk a bit about the history of the IP, which is going to be kind of difficult for me in this case because it's a confusing mess. I can tell you that the original character is old as fuck, created in 1939, and originally starred in a radio serial alongside his comic. I know very little about this character, but I suspect he inspired the tick. Later on in the 60s, the character was reworked by Steve Ditko for the Charlton Comics lineup, the characters which would famously go on to inspire Alan Moore's Watchmen. That character is actually still around in DC Comics, but that's not the Blue Beetle that this movie is based on. This is Jaime Reyes, a teenager who accidentally became bonded with a scarab-shaped alien device used by the original Blue Beetle not the Steve Ditko Blue Beetle. Although, uh, the original Blue Beetle didn't technically have it, I think he got it later, and at that point it wasn't an alien thing, it was like an Egyptian magic artifact, and like, uh, okay, forget it. You know what? We're in the weeds now and it's not important. Jaime Reyes, an alien device jumps on him like a friggin' face hugger, and now he's a superhero. So for the first half of this movie, I was totally ready to write it off as a pretty unremarkable, formulaic superhero movie. The early parts of the movie feel like they're trying so hard to be funny all the time, it makes Jaime's family just seem obnoxious. Like, I get that they're supposed to have a cute, joking relationship where they rip on him a lot, but it kind of gets past the point of endearing. Also, Jaime is just not a very interesting protagonist. Later in the movie, there's this part where he uses his powers to make a sword, which looks very much like a Final Fantasy reference, and I thought, man, that would have been more exciting if they had set up that he likes anime and video games, or for that matter, if they had given him any memorable character traits, you know, something more than went to college. He doesn't have a lot of agency in this story either. It kind of feels like he just gets pushed around by the plot. So we get our other typical setup stuff, you know, love interest, sub-villain, evil businessman, or, well, evil businesswoman, it's Susan Sarandon. At this point, it still feels like pretty standard superhero fare, albeit with a lot more Latin flavor. My personal reaction to that stuff is pretty neutral. I don't have much of a connection to that community, but representation's all well and good, so more power to them. Around Act 2, I started enjoying myself more. The humor started to take more of a backseat, and it felt like the movie was taking itself more seriously. Like, the family feels a lot more real once the stakes are raised and you see them showing concern for each other. There's a couple fight scenes where Jaime repeatedly almost gets people killed by refusing to kill anyone himself, even when those people are firing machine guns directly at his family. That honestly annoyed me. I get that they don't want their superhero killing anyone, but the scenes push that tension so far that it just makes him look stupid. Then he gets captured, and the family has to save him by stealing Old Blue Beetle's flying bug ship, which is a pretty cool callback to earlier versions of the character. The scene where they attack the villain's hideout with it is actually a lot of fun. Very campy, which I like, and I enjoy that 60s aesthetic of Old Blue Beetle's tech. And it was a fun way to get the family involved. You know, a lot of movies these days claim to have family themes, but usually it's just a way to insert some emotional weight into scenes that otherwise would have none. I'm looking at you, Disney Star Wars. This doesn't do that, though. The relationships with the family actually feel important, especially the dad. Later on, there's this dream sequence of Jaime having to say goodbye to him, and it's genuinely really touching. It's honestly too good for this movie. It's like a scene out of The Fountain. But the thing that interested me the most was when the movie started to have some social commentary going on. 
It starts subtle, like the family doesn't want to call the police because some of the older members are here illegally. Then when the bad guys show up, they storm the house and drag the whole family out on the lawn in a scene that feels reminiscent of an ice raid. Then there's a scene with the villain where she's introducing some general and she mentions his work on anti-communist operations in Guatemala and also the School of the Americas. And if you know your Latin American history at all, you know those are some pretty dark references. And at this point, the Latin American flavor of the movie actually does become something I care about, because now it's not just set dressing anymore. You know, now it feels like we're actually having kind of a conversation about the way these people have been treated historically, which is a lot more interesting. Speaking of which, I want to talk about Grandma for a minute. Now, in the trailer for this movie, they show the grandma wielding some kind of minigun-style heavy weaponry. Bust it down! Bust it down! Nana? I advise me back away. And of course, when I saw that in the trailer, I thought, oh, what a dumb, lazy joke. But it turns out I liked it a lot more in context, because it's not a one-off joke. As soon as shit gets serious, the grandma, who was just an oblivious side character up until now, turns into Sarah fucking Connor. She's like leading the family and the mom has some line like, oh, I guess we never told you about your grandmother's revolutionary days. Then at one point she has to save Jaime and she kills so many people. Like she just sprays gunfire at this crowd of guys coming down the hallway while screaming death to the imperialists. That caught me off guard. In this movie that earlier seemed so against killing, I was not expecting Grandma to just straight up murk 12 soldiers like it ain't shit. Jaime's reaction is funny too. You can tell he's shocked, but he's not gonna question her, you know, he respects his elders. Honestly, the Scarab should have chosen Grandma. She could have really gotten up to some shit. Imagine that movie. 40 years after fighting a US-backed dictatorship, she's finally gonna get her revenge. At the end, we find out Subvillain's tragic backstory, which is that he's from Guatemala and his village was firebombed by the government. And we're treated to a flashback of this happening while a Ronald Reagan speech plays over it. Fucking based. Thank you, Blue Beetle. Now call me biased, but any movie that portrays Reagan as a genocidal monster is pretty cool. Sorry if that's not like a professional film critic kind of attitude. I'm not Roger Ebert. Man, remember how people thought the Barbie movie was too political? <sighs> it's totally the same day I started this. Anyway, in summary, I liked this movie. I can't in good faith call it a particularly good movie. More of a guilty pleasure, although I've never been crazy about that term because I don't believe in feeling guilty about the things you like. There are parts I liked a lot, but the beginning drags it down too much for me to feel like it's fully redeemed. Also, the relationship between Jaime and Kaji Da, which is the AI in the Scarab, feels half-baked. It felt like there should have been more dialogue between them. You know, show how they learned to work together. Jaime just needed more character development in general. He's a boring protagonist. You know, in the Young Justice cartoon show, Kaji Da shows a lot more reckless disregard for human life. And that creates a lot of dramatic tension around Jaime's decisions, since Kaji is much better at fighting, but letting them take control is a big risk. I think this movie wanted to have that kind of dynamic, but it feels really rushed here. So instead it kind of just feels like the John Connor Terminator relationship, where Jaime can just tell Kaji not to kill, and it's never an issue again. But the family stuff did kind of win me over in the end, and more importantly, this movie has something to say, which is interesting, and that, to me at least, elevates it a bit. Apparently the director wanted to do a Bane movie, and honestly, that sounds awesome to me. I wish we had gotten that instead of this. You know, my favorite DC movie at present is James Gunn's Suicide Squad, because it's about a group of misfit underdogs who've been cast out of society, teaming up to fight a corrupt system. You know, you can do that with bad guys. 
One thing I think has always been an issue for DC's core lineup is that they're not very relatable. You know, you've got all these billionaires and royalty and messianic space aliens. Even characters like Jaime Reyes and Cyborg have to rely on getting randomly chosen by magical space technology. It's more inspiring to see a character who's not destined for greatness realizing that they can still be a good person. They can still make a difference. Also, in a movie about characters who are traditionally villains, you can have the US government and the military be their direct antagonists, which doesn't really work with Superman. And let's face it, that's just a lot more relevant to most people's life experience. Especially if you're trying to give an authentic voice to people from minority communities or the global south. And honestly, I think it would be great if DC did more stuff like that. It would be a great way to differentiate themselves from Marvel, who have gotten extremely cozy with the military. So it looks like this movie was a flop, at least in financial terms. And I have to say I can see why. Not only does it not feature any particularly famous talent, but all the marketing makes it look boring as hell. As I said, it set my expectations pretty low. I saw this interview with the director on the CBS Morning Show, and seriously, look how generic they make it sound. It is DC Studios' first Latino superhero film, Blue Beetle. It follows a teenager who receives the power of the scarab and transforms into a superhero, and his supportive family is there every step of the way. Jaime was a very reluctant hero. Yes, 100%. And you said you did that deliberately. How come? In the Latino community, family is everything. It is everything. Oh, wow. They value family. How novel. You know, us white people, we just eat our babies like hamsters. I have a feeling he was told not to talk about the more political angles of the movie beyond just the presence of Latino people. Which is a shame, because the political stuff is easily the most interesting thing about it. He should have been like, yeah, my movie's about how the US security state are a bunch of genocidal imperialists who've historically oppressed Latin America for their own economic benefit. That would have gotten some attention. I sure would have gotten my ass to the theater sooner. They could have had Fox News giving them free coverage, calling the movie communist propaganda, which is great publicity. Look how well the Barbie movie did. So I was curious how others on YouTube were reacting to this movie, which led me to look up some videos. Overall, I thought the reviews on YouTube were pretty fair to it. They skew negative for reasons I mostly agree with. You know, a derivative story, boring protagonist, lots of plot contrivances. But then I discovered another type of video going around. Apparently one of the trailers for this movie sparked a massive backlash, and it was because of a line that I thought was completely innocuous. Man, fuck me, right? Clearly the line is supposed to represent feelings he has about a lot of real-world people, and those people are on the right. This statement falls along a far-left narrative, and as I read it matches his tweets. Calling people fascists is something the far-left does, and he just couldn't keep his politics out of the movie. Even when it comes to the backlash for that Batman is a fascist line, the director tried to play it off as some sort of a joke, and saying that fans and critics didn't understand the joke he was trying to make, but in my opinion, calling someone a fascist is never a joke, and fascism is definitely not a topic that you should ever joke about. So to the people who got mad at it, give us a chance. We're just trying to have fun with the characters that we love. Uh, I, for some reason, I don't think you're doing that. Uh, give you a chance. You are literally mocking people, bro. Uh, and, you still and you haven't apologized for it. You would not believe how many people got pissed off at the line, Batman is a fascist. Seems like they take it really personally, too. There's all this talk about how the filmmakers hate Batman and hate the audience and only said it to insult you for liking Batman. And it's like, guys, I hate to break it to you, but I'm a Batman fan and sometimes he's kind of a fascist, especially when Frank Miller writes him. And it's not like this opinion just popped up this year because people who aren't real fans want to attack him. It's an extremely common take that people have been saying for decades. Frank Miller and Alan Moore are probably the two most influential Batman writers alive, and they've both commented on this despite being on opposite ends of the political spectrum. 
Funny how these people never care about the opinions of the people responsible for the Batman stuff they grew up with. I mean, can you imagine if Brie Larson had been the one who said superhero movies are a precursor to fascism? We'd never hear the end of it. And it's not like it's hard to understand why someone would call Batman a fascist. He's an anonymous vigilante who openly works with the police while flouting the law himself. Is it so hard to believe that a character who's established as someone who distrusts the police and the government would call him a fascist? Even in the Christopher Nolan movies, which are very pro-Batman, Nolan understands the character well enough to know that what makes Batman compelling is that he walks a dangerous line of moral gray areas, so they at least explore the idea that maybe sometimes he goes too far. The Dark Knight even ends by pretty explicitly making the point that if a politician tried to go around the legal system the way Batman does, that would be bad. Sometimes the world needs a different kind of hero. Even Zack Snyder understands subtext well enough to get this. In his movie, Batman going too far with punishing criminals is what drives the starting conflict. But I guess it's okay there because Superman doesn't call him the scary F-word. All these people seem to be saying it's the director putting his politics in the movie or something, and it's like, no. No, it's not. It's the equivalent of that line in the Barbie movie, where the girl tells Barbie that she's bad for a little girl's self-image and she promotes consumerism. That movie is obviously still very positive about Barbie, they're just bringing up the criticism because it's so ubiquitous that they might as well be part of the conversation. And the irony here is that the filmmakers did put their politics in the movie. You know, at the part where they show innocent Guatemalans being slaughtered while a Reagan speech plays. But I can't find anyone saying that was too political. To me, this kind of reaction speaks to a really shallow way of engaging with art and politics. You know, since the start of the superhero genre, they've been used to represent all sorts of political ideas. From Iron Man being created to promote the Vietnam War, to the X-Men being reinvented as a comic book analog for the Black Panthers. But it seems like a lot of people only want to see them flattened into simplistic hero archetypes, incapable of greater meaning, whose only value is to be praised and emulated. I don't know, it just gives me this image of a little kid getting mad at another little kid for playing with Batman toys wrong. No, you're not supposed to do that. Batman is supposed to be the good guy. Hey, so I was watching back through this video as I was getting ready to post it, and I started thinking, you know, I should probably make clear that I realize this backlash isn't really about Batman. It's about people who feel like their personal politics are getting called out in movies. You know, at the end of the day, how you feel about that line probably has very little to do with how you feel about Batman. It's about whether you think someone might call you a fascist. I guess I just thought it was a funny reaction, and engaging with it earnestly gave me a chance to talk about some stuff that I wanted to talk about anyway. But I don't want to give the impression that I'm some enlightened centrist type who thinks that the right's culture war bullshit can be defeated with rational debate. Honestly, the three people I showed you are some of the more reasonable ones. But some of those videos are dudes getting, like, really unreasonably angry while going off on these misogynist or transphobic rants about the people who are taking their superheroes away from them. It's not even funny. It's, like, worrying. I hope they get therapy, because this is definitely not about Batman. So yeah, sorry this video got off on such a weird tangent, but in all seriousness, support trans rights, end imperialism, and fuck the police. And you know what? I'm even gonna apologize for my prior ambivalence about the representation angle. Clearly America needs to hear from different perspectives. What was this video supposed to be about again? Oh, oh yeah, Blue Beetle was okay.